All right, everybody. It's been about a month. Well, a little over a month since I've did an update. So I'm going to take you through the garden and show you what's been uh, what's been growing, what's been changing, how everything's looking. <clears throat> Our temperatures are now up to about 95 during the day, so it's starting to get hot. But uh, we've harvest, harvested some of our beets, and we made beet pickle, and we just left some of these over just to, um, you know, to have beet greens in our salads, and uh, we may do some beet uh, root pickle again. But our spinach, <coughs> we picked over our spinach, and we put enough in the freezer for uh, about a year's worth of uh, spinach to add into uh into our uh, our meals that we cook with so it won't be long and the beets will be coming out and the spinach will be coming out and the cabbage lopers of our <coughs> have just wreaked havoc on our kale over here as you can see they're just ate up with the holes and uh, you come out here anytime during the day and it's just probably 30 or 40 white um, moths dancing all over the cabbage laying eggs so we've been battling all of our cabbage lopers trying to uh, keep our kale <clears throat> all right so over here we have the nasturtums that are blooming and uh, they're filling out very nicely now we pick these and we put these into our salads and uh, i eat the blooms and i also eat some of the smaller tender leaves it has a really uh sharp pepper flavor i um, say almost like a what a radish would taste like and i really enjoy these in the salads uh, artichoke artichoke they're growing nicely and uh, i imagine they'll pick up speed <clears throat> and start growing a little bit better when some of this other stuff starts dying off and give it room and i expect it to start uh maturing on out <clears throat> These are uh, Clemson spine, spineless uh, okra, and they're starting to get some buds on them, so it won't be long, and we'll start having some okra to eat and uh, put in our freezer so that we can use uh, okra and some of the ingredients, uh, like gumbos and stuff like that, that we, we like to eat. And uh, sunflowers are looking good. Now, <clears throat> because I have this pecan tree right here, the canopy hangs directly over where the sunflowers are at. So I get about six hours of sunshine, but from about one o'clock on, this side of the garden is, uh, is shaded. And I think that's just kind of stunted the growth on the, uh, the sunflowers. So when the sunflowers mature and get out of here, I'm probably gonna come back in the fall and put some of the cooler weather crops over here, maybe like a lettuce or broccoli or, or uh, you know, something that can't take as much heat. And I'll probably just go back in with a with a cooler crop. And I plugged a little little basil plant in right there. So whenever that basil gets up, we'll start uh, using that for some of our seasonings. And some more basil over here also. I've got a purple variety in there. <clears throat> I got a little salad tomato. And it's not looking too good. I don't know what's going on with it. It looks like it's wilted from lack of water. But I tell you, it's not from lack of water. We've had rain about every other day for, you know, last two or three days. And everything else is looking good in the garden. So I'm hoping that it'll pull through. But like I said on my last video, the, the lettuces won't last long. The lettuce have been here for about six weeks. As you can see, they're starting to really shoot up, and uh, that means they're getting ready to bolt. And I tasted these yesterday, and they don't have that bitter flavor just yet, but with our 95 degree temperatures, it won't be long. This stuff will start sending up a flower head, and it'll start turning off bitter, and then all these lettuces are going to have to come out of here. But if you want a good variety in the south that can tolerate heat, uh, look for Black Seeded Simpson, and then... That's a romaine. Romaine root does really good in the heat. And um, Great Lakes salad is what we have right there in the back. That dark green, this light green is Black Seeded Simpson. And then, uh, like I said earlier, that's, that's romaine. So this artichoke gets plenty of sunlight. The sun comes up.
from the east over there. Gets plenty of sun throughout the day. And this canopy where the sun travels, it travels right along the side of that canopy. So this area of the garden actually gets quite a bit more light than the, uh, the sunflowers do over there. And they probably get about an, an extra four or five hours that that side of the garden doesn't get. <clears throat> now this is a Seminole pumpkin and uh, this is a pumpkin that was that grew primarily in central Florida that the Seminole Indians used and they would trail this pumpkin up the trees. Now this is a perennial pumpkin. If the cold doesn't kill it, it keeps growing and it keeps producing and it'll just produce as long as as long as the uh, environment allows it to. But with the cold temperatures we get up here in uh, 8B, this is a seasonal plant for us. But I'm excited about trying these pumpkins. They're really small and uh, it's supposed to have a really nice sweet flavor. So we're gonna see how these turn out. Now over here, our Christmas butter beans have went all the way up this seven foot fence. And you see they're several feet past the fence now. So we're looking at about nine foot on these Christmas butter beans. And if you look in here, we're going to have quite a few uh, butter beans this year. These things are absolutely loaded. And it's going to we're going to have a uh, fun time trying to hunt to pick these things before they get a little overripe. Now see, there's one of those cabbage moss I was telling you about. <clears throat> now coming back over here to our carrot bed. Our carrots are looking really good. We've gotten some good rain last couple of days and they've really shot up. They're greening up. And uh, I went through here and hand thinned these things. So you want your carrots to be at least an inch apart so that whenever the, uh, the roots start growing on them, they don't touch each other. So you want to give those roots uh, plenty of space to grow. The hardest thing about growing um, vegetables is knowing when and how to come in and thin stuff out. Some of these things will come up two, two carrots side by side and it, you just have to uh, go in and know which one to select, select the strongest one and pull the other one out. You want to give it space. If you don't give a carrot proper space, it'll never uh, form that taproot that you're looking for. <clears throat> one of my tomatoes that was tucked over in the corner you can tell it's it's getting a little drowned out over there but <clears throat> and I kind of figured that it would with all these green beans I just don't think it's getting the light that it needs um, these butter beans are nitrogen fixers so I don't think that it's starving that tomato for lack of nitrogen um, I think maybe it's just a little overcrowded being plugged in that corner over there so we won't put a tomato there next year if we go back in here in the same area with uh, green beans again. So as you can see, there's some of our, our uh, Christmas butter beans right there. And these things are just absolutely loaded all the way up and down. So I expect within the next week or two we'll have plenty of uh, butter beans to come back in and uh, pick. Now over here we have the those three vines that you see right there. That's fava beans and they make a really huge pod with a really big bean and we're gonna see how these things turn out this year. Cantaloupes right in there. I have I've been looking around and I haven't seen any small cantaloupes started to form yet. But I suspect it won't be long. And then we got a couple of watermelon that are plugged in right there. Oh, wow. Look at here. Look at all those little grasshoppers right in there. Yeah, those are not good. We don't want those in the garden. So we're going to find some way to get rid of those. Um, now over here we have butternut squash. I told you last time I didn't know what kind of squash these were. Whether it was going to be acorn squash or butternut. I couldn't remember what was planted in this exact spot. So it turns out that we're going to have some uh, butternut squash in there. So excited for that. Never grown butternut before. 
Got a little Malabar spinach that is plugged into here. That's supposed to be a heat loving variety. It's supposed to trail up really tall. It takes a number of uh, weeks for that to get going. So, and just this week is, it's just now started to uh, shoot up. So I expect it'll come on up. And especially when these cucumbers start to finish off, it'll give that Malabar spinach plenty of room to uh, fill on out. But our cucumber vines are looking good. We've already had cucumbers off of here. You can see right down in there, starting to have some cucumbers. Probably need to come out and do a little picking over. Yeah, they're all in there. So maybe by tomorrow, because we just got a rain a few minutes ago. Maybe by tomorrow, we'll have to come out and do some uh, some picking of the cucumbers. And there's three varieties here. There's an Asian yard long, and there's a uh, straight eight, and then a space saver pickling variety right over here. So three varieties of cucumbers. Another tomato, and I just came in and uh, put this bamboo pole in here and stake that along beside it, but I haven't come back to uh, tie that to the pole yet and straighten it on up. But that's just where I lifted it, and uh, I'm going to tie that off and secure that plant a little bit better. And there's another Seminole pumpkin, and I'm uh, training it to, to climb up this, uh, this fence. Now these green beans are the yard long oriental type of green beans and they haven't started to uh, set green beans yet on them but whenever they first started out they were looking really diseased and you see some of that disease left over down here. Those leaves don't look good but I said I was going to give it a little bit of time and see how it did. Now as you look this newer foliage this is looking good. I'm okay with this. Now once these grow out and they do good for us, we're going to save some of these seeds and hopefully these seeds will be climatized to, uh, specifically to this area and uh, maybe they'll be a, a better performing seed for us maybe next year. Now on to our rattlesnake green beans. They have just exploded in growth and these things are absolutely loaded with green beans and it's going to be another day or two and we're going to have to come in and do some picking but our green, green beans are absolutely just loaded they're everywhere in here now what I do like about these green beans is the stripes <clears throat> now when you get ready to cook these green beans um, the striped color will uh, that'll turn back green that won't keep the striping after you cook it but uh, I've been really happy with these so far pretty uh, lavender blooms good looking green beans with all the different striped colors and this is supposed to be a heat loving variety and these are supposed to uh, produce all summer long so we're gonna see how many green beans we get out of this <clears throat> now over in this corner we have a mr. stripey as you can see he's about four foot tall top of that fence is four foot there so he's doing good and we got some tomatoes in there and tomatoes are okay nothing impressive coming on yet nothing to uh, brag about I've got one other tomato over here and I think this was a big boy one of the ones I raised from seeds and I don't know what happened to that but there's probably something going on below the sub soil, or below the soil, that I can't see. But that's probably going to end up being replaced by some of the other tomato plants that I just started from seed. But all along this line, I have Big Boy and Cherokee Purple. And that one big one down there, that's uh, Black Beauty. Now I just started Gold Meadow, Gold Metal, and uh, Amish Paste. And those are going to be going in one of these uh, other garden beds over here. And so I'll have a garden bed of, of those specific varieties. This is a uh, mammoth jalapeno. And these peppers are looking good in here. As you can see, nice big healthy looking jalapenos. Looking real nice. 
all clustered in there and they got plenty of uh, blooms coming on this plant's really looking good we put uh, some basil in right there so once we start making some uh, pickles dill pickles we're going to use the basil for the dill pickles <clears throat> some more basil um, Tabasco pepper and I held this pat this uh, pepper plant over from last year and I put it in my garage and I, when we had a really bad freeze it got down to eight degrees and the soil in the garage had frozen solid but uh, I had moved these things outside to get rid of them and walked around behind the shed and looked and it had started growing back over the spring so I pulled it out of the pot put it in the garden and it's doing wonderful. So we expect to have a good harvest of uh, Tabascos again this year. And we use this for make pepper sauce to go over turnips and collards. And uh, that's a good pepper. It's nice and hot though. So if you like a spicy uh, vinegar sauce to put on your greens, that's a good pepper. Now this is the Black Beauty and it's growing nicely. Nothing wrong with this. And I got some nice little uh, tomatoes under there. They're looking real good. So excited for this one. Can't wait to see how those uh, those tomatoes turn out. <clears throat> now, if I don't, if you don't remember, this is what this was a pepper dew. This pepper dew pepper is several months old, and it just has never done anything. So this one is about to get pulled out. And we're not even going to waste any more time with it. Um, a few weeks ago, I popped a few more seed in the uh, starter tray. And the, uh, the pepper that came up out of the starter tray has way past the size of this one. And so we're going to keep it in a pot. And we're going to baby it in a pot and uh, give it a little extra care. And we're going to see just how well that pepper does this year. Marconi peppers we've already harvested off this cooked with it but those peppers are looking good the best time to pick these peppers is when they turn red this is a sweet pepper and you kind of want to replace what a bell pepper is with this this is supposed to be a better tasting pepper than a bell pepper so that's why we have that Marconi Cubanelle we actually just used the Cubanelle first time tonight I was happy with it and we used it also as a replacement for the uh, for the bell peppers and it was a nice sweet pepper and we cooked it in with our squash just started out some uh, Mexican gherkin cucumbers they're the little bitty cucumbers they get just about an inch long and uh, they're just you know bite-sized cucumbers and I've never had those before so we're going to see how those turn out. Now the gherkins got put right back in where I had one of my cool jalapenos, heatless jalapenos at. I had a cut worm, took that jalapeno pepper right out. And it was actually the biggest plant that I had. It was bigger than this one. And uh, I was sad to see it go. But yeah, Mother Nature, they always take, their, uh, take theirs from the uh, garden also. But I got one more to replace it with. That's also a cool pino. And then two bell peppers. And they're just starting to take off with all the, uh, the heat that we've just had. And uh, these are our squash. We've got five plants here. And uh, we have some nice, really big squash off of those. But uh, we're going to start cooking them. And what we don't cook, we'll blanch and we'll put in the freezer. And we'll, so we can have... Uh, squash all year long asparagus jersey supreme now this is where the broccoli was at and we've ripped the broccoli out and we got six gallons of broccoli florets just out of this bed and that's enough broccoli that'll get us all the way through the next harvest which will be in the fall so in the fall when some of these uh, summer vegetables are coming out we have some empty beds we're probably just going to fill them back up with broccoli since we did uh, so well with the broccoli this year 
But right now in this bed, I got uh, German giants so far. And we just put those in there. So they don't, that's why they're so small. We just, uh, just got them up from seed last week. But just in one week's time, that's not bad growth. They're doing good. It got a little hot out here right after we put them in, so it suffered a little bit from the heat. But those tomatoes are looking good. And then this is a uh, um, ghost pepper. I actually really like the flavor of the ghost pepper. And believe it or not, I like them best in chocolate chip cookies. Absolutely wonderful. Just don't put too much or it'll burn you up to where you can't control it. But uh, just a little gentle spice, chocolate chip cookies, wonderful. Edamame. The edamame finally came up. I had to replant it three times. I planted it in one row. I held back some seeds. It came up. And then the other day, I replanted the rest of the seeds. And they're just now starting to go, uh, come up. So, looks like we're going to have some soybeans this year. <clears throat> Ripped out all the turnips that were over here. Went back in with four zucchini on that end. I don't know what we're going to put in over here yet. Probably going to put in some of the tomatoes that I just started from seed. They're probably going to go in right here. Harvested some of my Walla Walla onions. And this was my biggest Walla Walla onion. And it rotted. So that's why I harvested the rest of the onions because I seen that that one had, uh, had rotted. So we went ahead and harvested them out. Um, more squash. Squash usually doesn't last long. Once they get up that size, either the heats get them, the heat will get them, or the bugs will get them. So that's why I decided to go ahead and start another round of squash. So we're going to see how this does. A couple of broccoli. Can't wait for those to get up and get out of here. They are uh, ugly looking, and that's from the uh, cabbage moth that we've had. But um, And I'm sure the heat is going to hold them back too. They probably won't do very well this this year because these were planted so late that uh, I'm not expecting much out of this this uh, this round of broccoli. Uh, this is the Grant, Texas Grand X onions. I have about 200 of them in here. Onions don't last long um, down here in the hot, humid South. So what we'll do is when we harvest these, probably in the next week or two. We'll cut them up into uh, slivers and put them in the uh, freezer, in freezer bags. That way we'll have onions, you know, for like an entire year or however long they decide to last. But onions in the freezer should last at least a year. Uh, strawberries, looking good, no complaints. We got Seascape. Um, strawberries. And I can't think of the other variety that we have. There's two varieties in there, but they're both doing wonderful. And this is broccoli. Can't wait for that to come out. I'm tired of looking at it. Now, this is a uh, sweet potato, and this is actually a purple sweet potato. And I bought it at the store, and it's purple inside and out. And even after you cook it, it's a dark, deep purple. So I went back, I bought one more uh, sweet potato plant, put it in the ground. I got all these starts coming. I counted them yesterday. Each one of these slips is a separate plant. Got some roots coming on down there. And uh, next day or two, I'll come in, I'll break each one of these off individually with roots attached, and I'll plant them out so that they, uh, they can grow. And we're gonna harvest some purple sweet potatoes this year. Tormatillas, they are starting to bloom. And that's to make salsa verde with. So we have two of those. And this is the uh, longevity or the Okinawan spinach. Okinawan spinach is supposed to be good for lowering cholesterol. You can see the, the uh, plants down here are starting to send off little shoots. That's looking good. Not much growth up here from the older, from the older parts of the plant. But I like to see these new, this new growth coming out from the roots. That's good. 
Okay, well, that's an update. That's a tour. Everything's looking good. You can see out there past the uh, garden, we have the orchard. Orchard trees are looking good. Um, over here, I got 14 varieties of figs. I'm a bit of a fig tree nut. Love figs. So I decided to put all my fig trees over on that side of the property where we had a fence row. We ripped that, rent, uh, we ripped that fence row out with a tractor and a bulldozer and uh, planted our fig trees over there. All right. Well, that's it. Thanks for the tour. And I'll try to get out here and do another update in about a month or so, and we'll see what's going on. Talk to you later.